Hi, and welcome to another Bible study. We ask for a word of wisdom from our Heavenly Father in Yeshua's name. So in this study, we're going to study the five months in Revelation 9, 4 through 5. Here we are given the commandment by God, and to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was of the torment of a scorpion when he striketh the man. So this is obviously the kind of torment that is mental and spiritual and not physical. So it's interesting to look at the five months and where it fits into the seven years that people often identify as the tribulation. So I'm going to overlay that for you and show you that the five months is toward the end of the seven year time period. We have 1290 days in Daniel and 1335 days in the book of Daniel that overlay also onto this chart. And to understand those, you can watch my series on deconstructing Daniel's dates. The 2300 days coincides with the end of the five months. A lot of these time periods interlock and start and end at similar times. So the 2300 days starts at its own unique time, but it ends with the five months. So we have this uh, scripture in Daniel that says, let seven times pass over the king of Babylon. And he was um, in the field uh, grazing like an ox and eating grass like an ox. He was basically not able to rule over his kingdom. So this is specifically why the seven years is not given to Satan, because that time is passed over him. And he can only rule at the end of it, which is where the five months is located. So this principle of seven times being passed over him um, starts with the book of Daniel. I'll show you in the book of Daniel when the king of Babylon ruled in 604 BC on the left side of my chart, how seven times passed over him up until the current day. We have 2,520 years, which equals seven prophetic years, 360. And so that's exactly a period of seven times being passed over the king of Babylon until the um, current anti-Christian people are in Jerusalem. They are not Christians, so they do not represent Christ or ownership by Christ. And so that starts that last generation. But also we have a grander week that passes over um, Satan being able to rule his kingdom. And that would be the creation week. It's a 7,000 year pattern given to us in the creation week where each day equals 1,000 years. And you just overlay it to the time when Adam was created. And that gives you another seven day period where Satan is not able to rule over his kingdom. He is not given seven years. He is not given the week of Daniel. He is not given the creation week. It's all taken away from him during this time period until the very end. And again, this time period is based upon the Septuagint, which goes roughly back a thousand years before uh, most people think Adam was created in 4000 BC, but the Septuagint says it's a thousand years earlier. So I put 5000 BC as an average, not an exact uh, day. I mean, I, I do have a chart that charts it exactly, but I just want to say in general that this 7000 years since Adam's creation, that time has passed over Satan being able to rule over that kingdom. Seven years is not given to Satan. Neither is the seven times it is passed over him. He only gets this tiny, tiny period at the end of time, which we're going to look at the five months. And so I said that he gets this tiny period, the five months, but he actually doesn't get the full five month period. He only gets half of it. So we're going to look at this in scripture. When is it portrayed that Satan would come? Well, the end of the 1290 days cuts the five months in half on our timeline. And you might ask, well, why would it cut it in half? In Matthew 24, 15, God said there is a trump coming when Antichrist comes. 
his arrival. There's only one arrival of Antichrist. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. So now we know we have one arrival of Antichrist. And that arrival is given a timeline in the book of Daniel. The timeline is given in Daniel 12, verse 11. And from, that's the starting point, the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and to the abomination that maketh desolate set up. There shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. So that is when the arrival of Antichrist comes. Given to us by Christ, referred back to the book of Daniel. So we return back to our chart and we see how this arrival is going to be mid five months. From Daniel 12:11, that's when the abomination that maketh desolate shall be set up. So you might ask, why do I place it in the middle of the five months? Well, th now we have to look at the five months exactly in Revelation 9 to see what is the events of the five months and how does that determine um, when Antichrist is going to arrive on the earth, which is Satan, of course. So now we have this five month period and we're told in Revelation 8 verse 1, this is the seventh seal. The seventh seal is understanding the last hour in heaven, which happens to be about five months. The fifth trump is starting the last five months because it clearly says in Revelation 9 that there are five months starting with the fifth trump. And in Revelation 9.9, 9, Revelation 9.1, the army is released from the bottomless pit. And once they are released, they run to the battle. But what battle are they running to? Specifically, the war in heaven. And this is what starts the five months. This is the woe that hell has been released. But are they released to earth yet? We have the deadly wound to one head on earth. And then we have the 1290th day right in the middle. That's the sixth trump and the second woe where Satan is cast to the earth. So again, you might say, well, we need to look more specifically at Revelation 9 to understand how it is that this army runs first to war God in heaven. And that is that woe. And then second, they're cast, they're thrown. Satan and his angels are thrown to the earth. And the fifth trump, they can't be thrown to earth because they're in the pit. He has to get them out of the pit first. So that we have that deadly wound healed and the hour of temptation. The hour of temptation is temptation. So it's only when Satan is here revealed on this earth. It does not include a period prior to that. The hour of temptation is only on earth. And then, of course, the seventh trump is when the true Christ returns. So we're going to start in Revelation 9, verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven. Now, where did it fall? It fell from the place where God dwells. So when you say heaven, as in the place of the pearly gates, where God is and his holy angels, that is where this star fell from. And he fell down unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. So once he gets to this location that he fell from, he opens the bottomless pit. So we know the bottomless pit is not in heaven, because he wouldn't have fallen from heaven to get to it. He has he has been relocated at this point and to open the bottomless pit. Now the subject of chapter 9 is the locust army, as we are going to see that this is the location of the locust army at the, at the fifth trump. They are locked up. And the only way to get them out is to have the key to open and let them out, which God gave this star, which is Satan himself, falling from heaven. So we are told about this place. This is not in heaven, this pit. The subject of the chapter in Revelation 9 is the locust army. 
So we are introduced to where they are. They are in this pit. And then the closing verse of the fifth trump says they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. So he's the king of the army that is in the pit. That's where they are located. So whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon and Apollyon. So the name Abaddon and Apollyon is destruction, but it's also king of the underworld, which is a location that he was thrown to. The pit, hell, world of the dead. This is not in heaven. This is a different place. It's basically hell. And of course, in verse 12, one woe was passed. So once they are released, that that is the woe with the fifth trump. They're released from that location. Looking up Abaddon, the name of the angel of the underworld. Okay, the name is taken from the Old Testament, Ab Abaddon, in Hebrew, the place of destruction. It is a it is a place. And it's used to describe this world of the dead. And that's what we're being focused on. This is not in our realm. This is not on earth. So even though it says he's cast to earth, we're going to be told in the book of Jeremiah that um, there's a place where this locust army is located. And it's in the sides of the earth, which is close to the earth, I guess. But it's in a different dimension. And it's where they are locked. So the angels were commanded to go to the earth for five months. But were they obedient? Did they follow this command? Did they say, yes, we will go to earth and do exactly as you commanded God? Um, it's, it says in verse 5, they have five months. That's kind of like a ticking time clock click. In verse 9, though, they do something quite different. They have the sound of their wings as the sound of chariots of many horses, running to battle so this is an action what battle are they running to what battle are they preparing for so we see at the close of the fifth trump again it says five months was started that you could hurt men but these uh, this locust army that was located in the bottomless pit, because remember, their king, he's the king over an army, and this is the army that he is king over. Um, they run to a battle. So we're going to do some a second witness and a third witness here in Jeremiah chapter 6 and Joel chapter 2 to see exactly what is going on. Okay, so here's my... Um, second and third witness to Revelation 9. In verse 1, in Revelation 9, we have blow the trumpet. That's the fifth trumpet. In Jeremiah 6, we have blow the trumpet in Tekoa. And in Joel chapter 2, verse 1, we also have blow the trumpet. So we have a similar fifth trumpet comparison in all three witnesses. In this same verse, Revelation 9, we have that the star fell from heaven. That is Lucifer or Satan. In Jeremiah 6, we have evil appeareth from the north. Remember, it's singular. A singular star, singular evil appears from the north. So the north not only represents a direction on earth, it also represents the direction to another realm or the supernatural realm, which is where Satan falls from. And... Well, he falls from heaven and actually stays in the supernatural realm, which is called the north. Because the bottomless pit is also north of our dimension. And in Joel, we are told that this army is a people not to have been ever the like. That is because they are supernatural. So here we have the identification of who this great army is that there came locust out of the pit. Remember, he's the king over the bottomless pit. So there has to be this locust army in the pit to be the king over them. And they come from the north country. In Jeremiah 6, verse 22, we are also told again they're from the north country, raised from the sides of the earth. So that's when he is thrown from heaven down to the sides of the earth. And in Joel chapter 2, we have also in verse 20, 
this army being called the Northern Army. So again, this is the Locust Army, and we are told where they are and where that location is from our realm. In verse 4, we are given the commandment not to kill those with the seal of God. So they can't kill us, but they can spiritually murder all the rest of the people. Remember I said spiritually. So that is why in Jeremiah chapter 6 they are called shepherds. They are idle shepherds. They are not good shepherds. But they are going to come because these shepherds in Jeremiah chapter 6 you shall see is the northern army. And in Joel 2 a fire devours before and after them. That is why we have smoke in Revelation 9 because they're going to devour all the, the spiritually dead. Here we have in Revelation 9, power is given them to torment men for five months. Now this is a limitation and a commandment, but they do not obey the commandment, as you shall see. Uh, in Revelation 9, we're told where they go. In Revelation, in Jeremiah chapter 6, we're told where they go then. So let's continue reading. So in verse 7 of Revelation 9, it says, they, Their shapes were like horses prepared unto battle. They were told the same thing in Jeremiah 6, Prepare ye war against her, Jerusalem. And in Joel chapter 2, verse 4, we're, called the, we're told the appearance of horses, so shall they run. They're not tiptoeing. They're not hiding. They're not being secretive. They're running to something. Now, we're told in Revelation 9, verse 9, the sound of many horses running to battle. If they're running to the battle, they're, they're moving quickly. We're also told in Jeremiah chapter 6 that they are set in battle array. Again, in Joel chapter 2, that the, it's a strong people set in battle array. They're not set in incognito, hiding from men on earth, being um, hidden or unseen. They are running to the battle. So again, we see them in Revelation 9 heading like a shot to somewhere. Do they go? Do they obey God is the question. Do they obey God and go straight to the earth? Jeremiah chapter 6 is going to tell us where they go. It says in verse 4 of Jeremiah 6, Woe unto us because the day is going away and there are long shadows. So they were given five months. Why do they wait until the day is almost completely done before they say we we want to attack. Why is the day going away? What was this army doing? And they were warring in heaven. So we're told that in Revelation that they are running to the battle. And we're told there is a war in heaven coming. So I'm going to show you that on my five months. You see here in yellow I have the war in heaven is the battle that they are running to. They do not obey God and go to the earth for the full five months. They are disobedient. And this is why the seventh seal is the last hour in heaven and there is silence in heaven for the second half because that is when they are cast out to the earth to finish the five months. So we are told here in Jeremiah verse 5 that after the shadows, uh, the day is almost completely gone away, that they say, Arise! All of a sudden they're rising up again. And let us go by night and let us destroy her palaces. So now they're going to a new battlefront. They're going to the battlefront of earth. Now in Revelation 9, we are only told they go to the battlefront of heaven. But in, Re in Jeremiah 6, we see that they're returning, or they're being cast from heaven to earth, and now they don't have much time left. It's documented in verse 4. And they have to go by night instead of by day when they were first released from the pit. They go by night to destroy where? Their entry point is Jerusalem to enter into the whole earth. 
And in Joel chapter 2, we're told that they march in rank and they shall enter in the windows like a thief. They have, in, they have an entry point and it's not to hide. They're going to come in full bore. So we are told in several places in Ezekiel chapter 4 that um, God said to Ezekiel, cast a mount. I want you to lay on your side for so many days and put a picture of Jerusalem on a stone and build battle rams against the city. Cast a mount against Jerusalem. This is the second battlefront that this army is headed for, earth. So who gets the warning? So I want you to see that in Jeremiah 6.10, that this is still in warning phase for the people of the earth. They are not in alarm phase yet. They have not seen the actual army. They haven't seen the arrival of Antichrist. Nothing is, nothing is evident. Everything is still in the other dimension. But who gets the warning? Those who read, those who read and study God's word, those are the ones who get the warning because it's written. This is your warning. And in Joel chapter 2, it says to rend your heart and not your garments because it's a spiritual attack, not physical. And turn unto the Lord your God. And um, in verse 13, we have from prophet to priest, everyone dealeth falsely. So we're still on the stage of prophesying. When is Christ going to arrive? Many people are saying rapture, which is not true. And that's why they deal, they're deal they dealing falsely. They're dealing uh, for false pretenses. They're not giving the real warning that the Antichrist, is the false Messiah, is about to arrive on the earth. That his army, he's the king of that locust army, which came out of the pit that he's the king of. They are set in battle array around the city of Jerusalem because their first attack in heaven didn't work and they get kicked out and Jeremiah documents that for us and also in Joel we have blow the trumpet in Zion sanctify a fast call a solemn assembly only those who know what's going on will be able to sanctify the fast none of the prophets will heed this warning and and they won't see anything happening Nobody will be, none of this army will be visible in the first half of the five months. They are behind enemy lines, so to speak. They have not cut through the dimension into our dimension. And we also have um, in Jeremiah chapter 6, the good way gives you rest. And in, in verse 16 there. So we're given the good way. The good way, the woman of Israel is completely protected. Those who study God's word, those who know Satan comes first as the false messiah, that is the good way. This great northern army coming can't touch you. You have the seal of God in your forehead. Can't touch you. You're completely protected. And then finally, we have the arrival. So if you look at the center here, um, I'm going to get my highlighter pin out. In Jeremiah 25 and 26, we have the words, don't go into the field. You know, Jesus Christ said the same thing. Don't go to Judea. Run from Judea. For the spoiler shall suddenly come. He doesn't come behind closed doors. It's tiptoe around. He's not in tiptoe mode. He is in battle array mode and he shall come suddenly. And that is the second woe. So you have the first woe is done at this point. Does that mean that the five months is done? No. That means the first woe is the release from hell and the war in heaven. And them being released is past. That woe is past. The second woe is the arrival. The first woe is not the arrival. So we also have in Joel chapter 2 over here on the right. Uh, it says, weep between the porch and the altar. They say, where is their God? So you have in verse 15, blow the trumpet in Zion. That is the sixth trump. 
So you see in verse 1, you have blow the trumpet. That's the fifth trump. And in verse 15, you have blow the trumpet again. That's the sixth trump. That's when we sanctify a fast. We fast from false doctrine, from bad prophecy and vain vision. And we weep between the porch and the altar. Because that's where the offering is given to God. And they're going to be giving an offering to the false god. And they say, where is your god? Because the first one that comes claims to be God. So they look to the, the elect who are saying, as they're given that word in that day, in that moment, and they say to them, where's your God? Because they don't know God's word. Finally, we have the first woe. The first woe is the war in heaven. And the releasing of the army in the pit that Satan is the king over. He needs them to fight the battle of the war in heaven. And at that point, the war in heaven will be over and we will move into the second woe, which is his arrival being cast to the earth with the angels. He can't be cast to the earth with the angels if they're locked up in the pit. That's why he is not cast to the earth in the fifth trump. He is cast to the earth with his angels, as it is written in Revelation 12, 7, at the sixth trump. So the second woe is the arrival woe. The first woe is the release of that army. And that is why the silence in heaven is half an hour, as it is written in Revelation 8, 1 that the last hour in heaven there will be silence in heaven that's because on earth will be the temptation of satan as the false christ he is not on earth in the first half of the five months therefore it is not the hour of temptation the hour of temptation on earth is the second half of the five months and that is why the five months itself was commanded to them, they were given to that time. But we're told in Jeremiah chapter 6 that, um, woe unto the shepherds, the idle shepherds, the false shepherds say, woe unto us, for the shadows of the day is long, and we have to attack by night. They don't have much time left. That's their own fault. They were commanded to go to the earth, but they broke the commandment of God, and they went to heaven, to battle heaven. And the only way to get them out was for Michael to cast Satan and his angels to the earth. That's written in Revelation 12, 7 as the second woe, which is the arrival woe. So I hope that helps clear up some of the um, understanding. This hour of temptation is written of in Revelation 17, 12. Revelation 17, 12 is where it references the supernatural kings, the 10 supernatural kings ruling over the earth with Satan because they're cast with him to the earth. They can't be cast until they're released from hell. So that is the conclusion of the study of the five months. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.